All right, so what I wanted to show you here about this, this oven outlet here, this is the old three style. We are gonna convert this to four. But here's something I don't like here. Do you see this right here? So I don't know if this is aluminum. I, I imagine it is, even though the rest of the house has been using copper grounds. I don't like aluminum. So we're going to have to change that out to copper. And then if you just look, I mean, look at, it's just totally stupid here. I mean, look, this whole outlet box is like crooked. It's, I don't even think it's mounted in there. So, you know, we're gonna probably end up taking this whole wall open anyway, um, just so we can replace everything. You wanna miss a ride? Ah, well, miss a ride. Too good to be true. You wanna miss a ride? Ah, well, miss a ride. Hey, everybody, Jeff here, and uh, welcome back. And if this is your first time with us, welcome to our channel. Each week, we give you videos on how to do all sorts of DIY remodeling projects around your house. And we also help you solve those very complex engineering issues that you're likely to face. Uh, really hard things to repair. So this would be a perfect time if you haven't already to hit the subscribe button down below. And once you hit that subscribe button, you'll see that little gray bell, click on that, and that will alert you to every time we put a new video so that you'll never miss a video. And also, if you like our video here, you can click on the thumbs up button down below. That lets us know that you like us. And any questions you have, please enter them in the comments down below, too. I want to take you over to the fuse panel, and let's take a look real quick. So you can see here inside the panel where we traced out where the stove wires come out. They come right here, the two conductors are right here the ones that carry the high voltage go right here 50 and 50 or 50 amps total um i don't like that i'm not so sure if that's copper or if it's aluminum coated copper but i'm also seeing some kind of black charring there so that doesn't look good to me and then also if you notice here the termination point of their aluminum ground wires they never even connected it up to ground here so i have no idea what the heck the builder thought they were doing when they set this thing up this is completely wrong so we're probably going to go and pick up another 25 foot long 6-3 cable and what that does is that's similar to the, the one they've got here and uh, this one here is um, it only has the three wires the neutral the red and the black it does not have the ground so we're going to pick up the 6-3 cable which you need for doing 50 amp oven range stuff that cable has the ground built into it for us so we're going to pick that up and it's very easy to just run it from here it's going to run right up the ceiling and all the way across the kitchen down the wall to the other side very easy to do we're going to take tear open this whole wall on this other side anyway for cabinet blocking and to find out what's going on back in there with the electricity because we found out too that range hood right there is connected to those outlets and that's not good because if you want to connect up your microwave oven you have to have a dedicated 20 amp circuit going to that outlet and, it, and that can be the only thing it goes to so we just need to make a home run back to the panel here that's a single cable all right so what we're going to do is slice the drywall all the way up in this area here. Mm -hmm. Get rid of it just so we can run that eight, that six three cable down. You better shut the circuit. Yeah, we gotta shut off all these circuits too. And then what we're gonna do, we're gonna basically drop most of this wall because in this section right here is where we're gonna put the backsplash. And so for that, I'm gonna use my dense shield instead of drywall just in this sort of lighter area that we see here. And that's a much better, more suitable substrate to put our tiles on. And plus, you know these studs might be a little bit uneven. So I can wet shim it and make it a perfectly plain tiling surface so that my backsplash tiles will not have any lippage. So we opened up the wall here at the bottom of the stove out and you can see the thing was just laying there, see? So we're going to replace this with a new box that gets strapped to that metal stud there. Alright, so over at the top of the fuse box we've run the 
6.3 wire down through the cable connector into the fuse panel. And there's your three wires that are eventually going to get hooked up momentarily. And then the cable, the new cable is right here and we'll run it along the ceiling where it'll come down the opposite side of the kitchen. We'll strap it to that metal stud all the way down. We'll strap it to the middle of the stud and drop it down to the hole where our new outlet box is going to go right there. Yeah. All right, so here's the new box we put it in and you can see it's got these straps that are built onto the side of it and you just use self-tapping screws to go right into the metal stud or the wood stud too. You can use regular screws to go into the wood stud. So here we're going to run our 6-3 cable through the top and into this thing. So what we did here was we put a little block behind it as well and we run a little screw into the block just to give you some nice solid stable uh, it can't move backwards any so the thing's pretty rock solid now. That way we have a nice solid outlet box. Alright so now we've run the three cables through the outlet box here and there's our cable connector strain relief secured to the top there so it's not going to go anywhere. You leave a good six to eight inches of wire sticking out and then we're going to if you see the ground is right here, we're going to put a ground screw in there to bond that box. That's a metal box, and as you know, uh, National Electric Code requires you to bond that metal box to ground. So now we can tighten it. See, so when your ground wire enters the metal box, by code, it has to be connected to the metal box like that. Yes. Through a green ground screw. See, here's our receptacle. See how deep that is there? That'll go deeper than most boxes that you can find, and you don't want to be bending these big old thick wires and pinching them, causing more resistance. So we're going to give it a nice gap. You can see it's going to fit back here into that deep box now. We, we made it deeper. So now you can see just how deep the box goes back there now. So this is my preferred way of doing it. Alright, so we've got all of these tightened here. Now this is ready to be put onto the plate and then assembled onto the front of the box. You can see right here we found a, a conduit pipe that goes up in the middle of the wall. So we use that to tape the um, the electric range power supply cable there, the 6.3 cable with the 12.2 cable also taped to it as well. Uh, that goes to the microwave oven right over here. So it just kind of goes right there and back up there. And we'll put the outlet right there for the microwave oven. So this has worked out really nicely for us because it's in the middle of the wall, in the wall space. So if anybody drills a screw through on either side of the wall, they're not going to hit our 6.3 oven cord, which is a, a problem that happens sometimes, especially when people are installing um, microwave ovens. That's a big problem for people. So in this case here, we already know where the cord is. Of course, if somebody was using something like a Wallabot scanner on their phone, they could find where the cord is and make sure they avoid it as well. But anyway, it goes up here, goes up around there. We've got it all fastened with straps to the top of our our strapping there that we're going to put the drywall up on and it runs all the way across comes back down and of course down into the fuse panel okay so now comes the moment of truth we're going to flip the switch here on the fuse panel and see if the stove comes on there she blows so there was our successful New oven power cord hookup. So now that our electric range power cable has been successfully routed and we've gotten power to the stove, that doesn't mean everything's done yet. You still want to put this all your uh, burners on there and you want to see if you can't get them all up running and test them out. So I'm just going to go across here and get them all on. 
another one here, another one here. So you should see them start to come on. And that's good. Because that means we hooked them all up right. And you can see them all coming on red. Because you could hook it up and you could see power on your clock there. But that doesn't mean that the other power cords were hooked up right. Because, see remember the clock runs off of its own. It runs off of 120. These other runs run off of the, the 240. So you could have only connected one leg right and maybe the other one's wrong so that's why you really want to test these out too and make sure everything is fine